You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. All right, Black and White Sports supporters, we're going to talk about Caitlin Clark. She dropped another game last night, or should I say, the Indiana Fever dropped another game last night, and you can tell she's got a lot of frustration. She wants to win. Now, the one thing I would say is this team is getting much more competitive, and they've come very close in their last two games, and they had to go into Seattle. 18,000 fans. That place was a sellout. It was ridiculous. I did a video yesterday. It was reported that was going to be the biggest gate in the history of the Seattle Storm. So that's two stops she's made. New York and Seattle, where she's come away uh, getting the most revenue ever for a gate because of ticket sales. I mean, for all the the haters that, that want to talk about she's not moving the needle and these WNBA players that are jealous, that's all you need to know. She's making the money for the league. All right, which is going to lead. I mean, look, charter flights already. I mean, come on. I'm not sure some of these women will ever get it. They're mad that their product didn't res uh, resonate. And I promise you, I've got a video coming on that Sonny Hostin thing. Uh, it'll be the next video after this one. So Charles Barkley hilariously called out Caitlin Clark's detractors as the Indiana Fever star received criticism seemingly for her skyrocketing popularity and for being white. Even WNBA players are hating on Clark, which many fan leaves many fans scratching their heads after all the positive press it's brought the WNBA. They're mad. Uh, they're mad because they... Look, Diana Taurasi and Ajay and Aja Wilson, Brittany Griner, they thought that all of their accolades was going to move the needle. And it just didn't. And so they're pretty jealous of what's going on, and it's pathetic. It really is. Just sit back, enjoy the ride. And for, for these players that's bitched about salary and having to go overseas to play, uh, enjoy it. So, Chuck, enter in Charles Barkley because uh, on TNT Sports he came out and made some comments about what it is Caitlin Clark's doing for the WNBA. I mean, I know for a fact two of those ratings we did, they were the first and second highest rated games in 22 years. Uh, I mean, that's all you needed to know. So, let's listen to Chuck. You women out there, y'all petty, man. Hey, LeBron, you 100% right on these girls hating on Caitlin Clark. Y'all petty, girls. <laughs> I expect men to be petty because we're the most insecure group in the world. Oh, you are. Y'all should be thanking that girl for getting y'all ass private charters, all the money and visibility she bring into the WNBA. Don't be petty like dudes. Listen. What she's accomplished, give her her flowers. Stop being petty, all you women out there. She got y'all ass charters. She bringing all y'all this money to the table, but y'all being petty like dudes. LeBron, you 100% right. Y'all girls, stop being petty. Kayla Clark, thank you for bringing all that money and shine to the WNBA. All right, so you heard, you heard Chuck right there. Stop being petty. You better thank this girl for everything she's bringing to this league right now. I, I just don't think they'll do it. I mean, the straight white thing, I think some of these activists in this league, and it's, it's a large majority an activist league, I don't think they're going to be able to get past it. I have this sneaking suspicion they will, will not be able to get past it. I mean, seriously. Uh, jealousy is a bitter pill to swallow. Seriously, 100 Smart man. I mean, you got, and I'm seeing this a lot online, all right? Jason Whitlock came out and said he bought WNBA League Pass. And I was like, yeah. I, I mean, it, it, he said, I feel ashamed. Me too, dude. But it, it, hell froze over. They actually got a player that moved the needle that made me want to watch the watch her play anyway. Seriously. Uh, it's crazy. 
It's been tough to watch, and it's not the usual online haters. It's current and former players. Oh, and Jamel Hill, who failed on ESPN and her book sold 50 copies. Uh, I love this meme right here. He's absolutely correct. Caitlin Clark trying to make the WNBA popular. You got WNBA players on her back trying to drag her down. It is nuts. It's the craziest thing ever. Perfect example. This guy right here. I've actually gone out of my way to look up times the Indiana Fever play. And I've watched a couple of games. Never thought in a million years I would do that for the WNBA. And I'm not the only one. I'm sure I'm not the only one. WNBA players should be applauding the young lady for bringing attention. Nah. They're, 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 they're so pissed off. It's like they're in a corner holding their breath right now till their face turns red. It's ridiculous. The only reason people are watching the WNBA is because of Clark. The league has not had one single profitable year in their existence. And they're talking about her bringing in upwards of $100 million to this league this year. At the end of the day, Caitlin Clark is good for business. She brought money, attention, and eyeballs to the WNBA. Yes, I'm rooting for Caitlin. I've watched part of three Fever games. You can see why they got the first pick. They are terrible, but I continue to watch. I hope she does well and the sport becomes popular, more popular, but it's not very good. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Seriously. So, uh, Caitlin broke her silence. She had another strong game. I'm sure the media will be like, oh, she struggled. It's crazy, that narrative. I saw last night. Uh, she she gained another, she joined a, yet another exclusive club. I think it was 85 points and 50 plus assist in uh, in their first five games or something. 85 plus points. Anyway, she was one of only three players. Um, Inescu and uh, Candace Parker were the other two to have ever done it. And she's having to fight the media like yesterday. USA Today, you know, talking about the fact that uh, they had her ranked fourth among five rookies, and she was outballing all of them. It's ridiculous. Despite the loss, Clark continued her strong play in her young rookie season. Look, guys, they lost 85-83. It was close. Came down to the final possession. She tallied uh, uh, 21 points, seven rebounds, seven assists, and two blocks. Clark also was able to limit her turnovers, recording only three, which is a season low for her. Again, about 10 or 12 of her turnovers on her record right now shouldn't even be on her. After the game, Clark sat down for a press, uh, post-game press conference and addressed the Fever's winless record to start the season. And let me scroll down here. Holly Roll posted this right here. Let's go. It's just that close, and there's so many instances of going back and watching the film of like little things that you can easily fix and clean up that um would go a really long way and possibly it wouldn't even come down to to one possession so um i think you have to find confidence in that especially you know at this point being on five like if you just you know get upset by it i, I don't think that's going to be too beneficial for us and obviously two more games on this road trip and um you got to find a way to continue to be positive and continue to feel uh, motivated by um, you know, what we did out there tonight, I thought, you know, there was some really good stuff. Um, you know, it's, you're never happy to lose. Like, it's not fun. Um, but at the same time, like, I don't know, I think there's just there's just a lot of things to, to build on it. And, you know, that's what I'm trying to just be as positive as possible, continue to learn, continue to stack days. And um, I know our first one will be right around. Here. Okay. You know, I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. One of the, the reasons she's popular is because she, she comes across as being likable. And she doesn't walk around just, again, it's an activist league. She doesn't walk around like she's mad at the world and, and is entitled to anything. And I think people actually, likability is a thing, and you want to support people that are likable. There, there you go. It's pretty easy. Uh, so, and she keeps it about basketball. I don't have to worry about some political message from her when I'm watching a game. 
Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, that does help your league grow. People are just fed up with it, for real. The team's getting closer. I mean, I could make a whole video just about the coach and some of the decisions that she's making. And they're not great at all, but they're getting closer. The last two games, they lost, uh, they lost against the Liberty in New York, but I think it was just, or uh, no, uh, against the Kinetic, Connecticut Sun in Indiana. They lost by only four, and then they lost by two last night. So the last two games have been much more promising. And again, it's laughable that anybody would write Caitlin Clark struggling. I, I'm floored by that. Guys, seriously, tell me what you think. Peace. I'm out till next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.